Hello and welcome back to the channel and today of course as you can tell by the title I am looking at FC25 on the Switch. Um, I thought I'd talk about it, it doesn't really get much publicity this version of the game so I thought I'd give my thoughts on it just in case you're wondering what it's like on the Switch if you're thinking about picking it up. So yeah this is going to be a quick video just looking at FC25 on the Nintendo Switch. So before I actually start talking about the game, I think I need to give a bit of history of FC slash FIFA on the Switch. It's been a bit of a turbulent history with this franchise. Um, all started back in 2017 when they released a port of FIFA 18 on the device, and it was it was okay. It was like it was almost like a FIFA 16 slash 15 version of FIFA on the device and. You know, people say that 15 and 16 are some of the best, better games in the series. And yeah, that's what FIFA 18 felt like on the Switch. So it was a positive port of the game on that device. But um, after that, things started to go downhill really quickly. Um, every single FIFA after that, so FIFA 19 all the way up to FIFA 23, which I think's about five games in were labelled Legacy Edition. Now if you don't know what Legacy Edition means, it's nothing fancy, it's actually something really bad. Um, EA do this with most of the old FIFAs on older consoles, so like the Wii, the Wii U, the PS Vita, the 3DS. They all started having Legacy Editions after about three or four years into development because what that means is nothing has changed in the game, the gameplay or the game modes, it's all the same stuff the only thing that's changed are the kits and the team like the teams like the transfers and stuff um it's basically like saying we do not care about this console anymore so we're just going to keep giving you the same game i mean there's mods for the ps vita that do a better job than the legacy editions do at updating the game for the new new release so yeah if a game gets marked Legacy Edition, it's it's game over for that console. So um, it was a bit sad. One year into the Switch's life cycle, we got FIFA 19, which I think, I don't know if that was labelled Legacy Edition, but that's basically what it was. I bought FIFA 18 when it first came out for the Switch. I saw my Switch a couple of years later. Didn't really pay much attention to what was going on, but I heard about FIFA on the Switch. I think IGN did a review every year of FIFA on the Switch and just slated the company because of how lazy it was. But yeah, a couple of years later I bought my new Switch and bought FIFA 23 at a discounted price. I think it was like £7 and I was fuming. Absolutely fuming because even though I paid £7 for it, I felt like I was ripped off because nothing had changed. It was still the same menu that was in FIFA 18 and it was the same game mode. The manager mode hadn't changed. The player career hadn't changed. I didn't even think about going on Ultimate Team because I know that would have been a mess. So... Even though I only paid £7 for it, it was I felt scammed and I was going to make a video on this channel before my tech and retrospectives, that was going to be my first video and I was going to just slate EA for what they did. Because FIFA 23 was actually a decent game, it had the World Cup update and it also had like an update where it added all the old songs from old FIFA soundtracks. None of that was done on the, on the Switch. I don't even think they updated the teams after the January transfer window. And I've got an example here of how lazy this port of FIFA 23 was. If you go into the team management system on the main menu and look at the players' ages, it's the same ages as if it was still FIFA 18. So I think Kylian Mbappe was still like 16, Messi was still 30, and you know, there's players who signed for Wolves, let's say Boubacar Traore for example, who's about 21, 22, and in the game he's still 16. His mum still buys his trousers! 16! Because they haven't, they're that lazy, they haven't even updated the date, the calendar, on the game. So, even though it's FIFA 23, it thinks it's still FIFA 18. That's how lazy these ports were. And things like that meant the game was really broken, um, especially in career mode. If you wanted to sign like, I don't know, a 68 rated 17 year old, they'd probably charge you about 25 to 30 million, because the calendar was just broken and it messed up the whole game really um, so it was just unplayable and I was absolutely fuming and then in the summer of 2023 we got a reveal of the new FC24 the first ever EA Sports football game without the FIFA branding and there was no mention of a Switch version so I assumed that they just cancelled the Switch version there it was done they weren't going to release it and then a couple of days later I saw the trailer for FC24 on the Switch 
and yeah, they, they proved me wrong because not only did they bring over all the game modes and all the updates from the console version, they also got it running in the Frostbite engine, which if you're not too familiar with engines and game engines and what they run in, for a Switch to run the Frostbite engine is insane, like it's mental, I didn't even think it was possible, but yeah, um, got it running in the Frostbite engine, the manager mode had been updated finally to match what we had on consoles, the player career was updated, Ultimate Team was a lot closer to the console counterpart, so yeah we finally got a decent port of EA Sports football game on the Switch and it was decent, FC24 on the Switch is, is a pretty good game, there are a few problems with it but all in all you get everything you get on the console version, it's just a bit downgraded in terms of graphics which is obvious that was going to happen. So the only problem I had with FC24 really was that it ran a bit slower um, in the gameplay due to it being in the Frostbite engine. Uh, I played FIFA 23 and 22 for this video and realised how fast in game they were. I think they run at 60 FPS whereas FC24 and 25 they run at 30 and it is a bit slower the game seems to be struggling a bit more and also in the transfer negotiations they're super slow, you can't just skip through it like you can on console and sometimes it'll crash the game and you'll have to restart if you haven't saved your career progress. Let's say for example at the start of a new season, you've gone through all that transfer malarkey, scouting and all that and then you go into transfer negotiations, it crashes, you have to restart the game and you start back at like, I don't know when the career mode starts, is it the 1st of July? You start all the way back there and you've got to do all that over again because the game just crashed. Um, and I'm afraid to say it, but they haven't fixed it in FC25. It's still exactly the same as it was in FC24. So um, let's just talk about FC25 now. So yeah, this year I have bought FC25 on the Switch as my main way of playing the game. I could have just got it on the Xbox, but I bought it on the Switch instead because I'm mental. I did it last year with FC24 and actually really enjoyed my time with it on the Switch. but there are a few problems with FC25 and it's due to the menus and I want to go into a bit more detail with that. So the main problem with FC25 and even 24 on the Switch is they've tried to cram absolutely everything that you get on a console version into the Switch and it just doesn't work. The Switch can't handle it. So a good example of that is in the transfer negotiation videos. Normally on the console it's a full motion video and it's like your manager's talking to the player and their agent or the player and I mean the your manager's talking to another manager and the player is just like a normal video in the uh, console versions. Now on the Switch it plays out like a little snapshot, it'll take a snapshot of the start of the conversation, the middle and it's almost like it's running at one frame per second in the full motion video but something I noticed in FC24 is actually, actually some of the animations actually played out like they do in the console version so it's almost as if EA have put that sort of system, or whatever they call it, into the Switch and just saw how it can handle it. And that means that the Switch just sometimes just crashes due to it being way too complicated for it to handle. Um, it's, it's really weird to explain. I've got some gameplay on the screen right now just to show you the difference of what actually happens. But yeah, on the Switch, as you can see, it's like a, a snapshot. But sometimes you can see the the animations actually play out and it just it just crashes the game and ends up you end up having to restart your career mode progress from the last time you saved and if you're starting a new career mode and you're sorting out all your squad and your transfers and all that stuff you're scouting um, it means you're going to start that all over again because you haven't saved the game and it's really frustrating it sometimes puts me off playing the game at all um, so one word of advice if you are buying this game if you're playing career mode save it every time you do anything even if you're changing your formation, just save the game because the second you go into transfer negotiations there is a small chance, actually quite a big chance, that the game's going to crash. And to be honest with you, the menus overall are a big problem in this game. For some reason it just it just lags through all of the menus. Sometimes they crash, sometimes you can't even get out of them. Even if you're doing a simple thing like going to team management mid-game, it takes forever. It's, it's like playing it on a PSP. It's so slow and I don't know why they haven't changed the system, whatever system they use for the menus to suit the Switch better. Like it, it's like it's the Switch it's like the Switch is trying to emulate the Xbox One version of FC25 and it's struggling. Why not just 
make it more simplified so the Switch can run it. But the one positive is that they've crammed absolutely every single game mode and feature that's present on the console on the Switch. Even the new simulation settings where the weather and the wind can affect the gameplay. Um, Ultimate Team is very similar to what you get on the console, even though the transfer market is probably broken. Um, career mode, everything's there. Everything from the new game is present, even in the player career, all present there as well. So yeah, you do get everything you get on the console version. It's just, it's almost as if you're running it on an emulator on a Switch, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, the menus are super slow transfer negotiations are broken and that was present in FC24 and they haven't fixed it so that's a major down point in this game in my opinion they had the same problems last year and they haven't fixed them they've just kept them in so it's almost as if this is a legacy addition to FC24 which is it's quite bad really because they're charging I think £60 for this game now they're not charging you know 30 or 40 quid like they were before they're charging full price and it's 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 a bit broken. So how about the gameplay? Well, it's it's okay. It's like I said before, it runs at a slower frame rate. It's a bit slower. I was actually quite surprised when I played FIFA 23 on this for the first time in about three years, and it was actually all right. I was actually impressed with how well it ran and how smooth it was. FC 25 though is a bit of a different story. Again, just like the menus, it's almost as if it's trying to run an emulator and it's just struggling. The frames drop. I think it's when you take when you involved in a corner, the frames just drop dramatic, dramatically. I've just made up a new word, but yeah, the frames just drop. Um, it runs a bit slow. It feels like there's a bit of lag when you're doing certain moves, when you're doing certain skill moves. It feels like it takes a bit of time for the game to react to what you're doing. Um, it is fun though. I have enjoyed it. I've never really disliked the gameplay, but every time I play it, I'm just like. This would be so much better on the Xbox or PS5. It, it just feels so slow. Um, I don't know why they haven't modified it to suit the Switch better. It seems like like they have just tried to cram it on and just said, yeah, that'll do. But um, sometimes the graphics are quite hilarious, like the uh, fans in the crowd. I don't know what they are. <laughs> it, it'd be better if they just didn't have any fans in the crowd whatsoever because it just looks so bizarre. And then you have thought the flame effects on the players' entrances. I don't know what that is. That's like PS1 type graphics there. But the player models don't look that bad. Like I've said before, it, it is like they've just tried to cram them in from the console version and just hoped for the best. Um, but they do look good. The uh, player models look, especially the ones that have been you know, face scanned and captured, they look really good. Um, if you make your own player though, they do look a bit strange, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like the new, um, the way you create a character in uh, FC25. It's a bit, it doesn't look right. It just looks a bit strange, but yeah. It looks okay. It's what you expect on a Switch. Play it in, like the portable mode though, do not put it on the TV because my lord, it is. You can see all its little blemishes because it's just horrendous. Like, even the starting load up screen, you can tell it's like an image off of Google Images that are just copied and pasted onto there and it just looks choppy and yeah, play it in portable mode. Do not put it on the big screen because then you'll realize exactly how much has been chopped and changed to fit on the switch uh, it's not pretty so yeah I'd, I'd definitely play it in portable mode because that's i think that's how it's supposed to be played really so what i recommend you buy fc25 on the switch yes and no i wouldn't buy it right now while it's full price it's not worth the full price i mean they haven't fixed things from the last game the m menus are broken they're so slow the gameplay is okay but it can be a bit choppy at times and can be a bit frustrating when it's a bit lagging or a bit behind um, but if you see this game go on sale for about I don't know less than 20 pounds during Black Friday or Christmas I'd recommend it especially if you you do long journeys and you want to play FIFA or FC as it's now called and you want to do a career mode while you're I don't know on a plane or a train or whatever you do um, it's it's decent it's a good port of the game if you're into like manager mode and play a career mode I wouldn't recommend it if you're into Ultimate Team, I don't think that's a good option, just play Ultimate Team on your console. But if you are like me and you enjoy the player and manager career, 
every feature you get in the console version is here but you just need a bit of patience because it struggles even in the menus even when you're making a substitution halfway through a game it struggles so uh, you've got to have a bit of patience with it but it's still fun I've had a lot of fun playing the manager mode this season already it's only been two weeks and uh, the player career mode's decent as well um, the difficulty I'd put it up really high because it's super easy on the switch like if you even have it on I think it's is it world class before legendary I have it on world class and I beat Newcastle like 6-0 in the first half with Wolves which is shocking so um, put the difficulty way up as well because you're going to need a bit of a challenge with the Switch version but yeah like I said if, if in a couple of months you see it for less than £20 I'd definitely pick it up it's not that bad um, it's got everything you expect from the console version it just runs a bit slower but yeah it's finally good to have a decent football game on the Switch for once I mean FIFA 23 was absolutely disgusting like look at that menu that's that's like a mod for FIFA 17 on the PS Vita. But yeah, I think it's good to show some appreciation when EA actually gets something right for once. So, um, shout outs to EA Sports for actually making a decent FC game on the Switch. I almost said FIFA. And it could be the last FC game we get on the Switch because obviously Nintendo are going to release their new console next year. So, FC 26, which seems disgusting to say. I, I can't even believe we're on FC 26. That's, I'm getting old. So that is it for today, me talking about uh, a football game, which I know most of you probably aren't interested in. Um, I thought I'd do something very similar to the Steam Deck video I did. That did really well, where I just talk with no script in front of me, so that's why I've been rambling on a bit. Um, and just let you know what I've been playing at the minute, what my opinions are on that game. So yeah, I am gonna be changing the way I do my videos on this channel. I'm gonna be doing a few more videos like this one today and the Steam Deck video where I don't really have a script in front of me and I'm just talking about something I'm playing at the minute. Um, then at the end of the month, I will have a big video that I work on all the way through the month. I'm not gonna talk about what it is yet, but um, every day of the week I've been writing the script and then next week I'll start recording the script and then the week after that I'll be editing it just to try and make a really good video, good quality video that's been had a lot of time put into it and then in between that I'm gonna have videos like this where I'm just talking into the webcam with no script talking just chatting shit about you know a football game on the switch which no one cares about but um yeah that video will be coming at the end of the month um, it's looking good I've enjoyed writing the script for it I can't wait for you guys to see it so I'll be working hard on that I might do another video in between that and now I'm thinking of other ideas to do but yeah that is it from me thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed please subscribe and leave a like it helps me out a lot and subscribing is the best way to keep up to date with the channel as i do post a lot in the community page uh, about updates on the videos coming up but yeah that is it from me thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you when i see you